Today, uh, the uh, presentation about epidemiology and prophylactics of the lung cancer. Although I consider to enhance my topic, and I will be talking about epidemiology, prophylactics of the malignant tumors as a whole, plus with certain diversions, I will include in my presentation, my lecture, my un uh, understanding, my attitude to epidemiology and prophylactics of other non-chronic, uh, non-infectious diseases. This slide is very interesting. It's a dynamic of mortality rate of all the reasons in Russia. This male and female population since the 1980s up to the current date. This slide can't be can't be called at a certain dynamics. You can see these upsurges and downfalls among males and females. Of course, the mortality rate in male uh, considerably higher comparing to women, but uh, the dynamics are, is similar. Ups and downs are very strong fluctuations. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact of how the mortality rate in Russia is high. Even at that point, after uh, the fact when the mortality rate decreased up to the low point, uh, the difference in the mortality rate uh, between the UK or all the European countries colossal. I'm not going to say how much the difference is. We studied the reasons for these uh, upsurges and downfalls of the mortality rate in Russia. I will be talking about this a bit later. What defines these mortality rate dynamics? First of all, the cardiovascular diseases, both in males and females. External reasons or non-medical reasons. As to the malignant tumors, so the dynamics is developing on its own. I'll talk about this in, on the other slides. So this is the structure of the mortality in Russia due to the malignant cancer. It doesn't differ from the mortality rate in the world. Uh, in the first place, the lung cancer rates first. Also in the world, uh, the lung cancer rates first. Uh, 1,600,000 persons uh, died annually from cancer, and 1,800,000 uh, developed cancer. Uh, the stomach cancer rates the second, and it's different from the American and European tendency where this disease is quite rare. Then we have colorectal cancer, prostate uh, cancer, the pancreas, and other. These are males and females. Uh, all, uh, in the first, on the first place, the breast cancer, colorectal cancer, the stomach cancer, and the lung cancer. It's uh, typical of all over the world. How our mortality rate from the malignant tumors look like comparing to other countries? Not very good. Uh, we are located quite high as to the mortality rate. This graph shows 15 countries with the highest mortality rate and 15 countries with the low mortality, low incidence. Russia rates uh, places over there. I'd like to draw attention to the fact that we are surrounded, surrounded by our neighbors of the Central Europe and the Eastern Europe and the former USSR. The ex exclusion is uh, Uruguay. The other countries, they are countries of the Eastern and the Central Europe. It's, you can see this picture everywhere. As to the male, uh, through females, the mortality rate a bit lower, but not the lowest one. It was the mortality rate of all the reasons. This is the dynamics. 
It's a good news. And as you can see, since the early 1990s, we can see the rapid decrease of the mortality rates. Considerable decrease in both groups. I'd like to point out that all the same, I cited several countries. In Hungary, the mortality rate reached uh, the highest level, but then started to go down in the 1990s. The same is true for the mortality rates uh, uh, from uh, in a women group. It started from the 1990s. The lung cancer, the main reason, and uh, uh, once again, the high level of the mortality rate, we rate eighth, and we are surrounded by our brothers from the Central and Eastern Europe. Good news is in the fact that the mortality rate is going down. This is 1992, 1993. I'd like to uh, speak in details about this slide. It's the UK, the green line. You can see the UK reached the high level of mortality of uh, the lung cancer. It's at the beginning of the 1970s, and we can see the downward tendency. Uh, no, 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 it's a blue line, the UK. The green is the USA. Of course, uh, they had some high levels of mortality rates, but quite low consider comparing to the UK and our country. We can see the downward tendency of the mortality rate uh, from lung cancer. The same is true in Australia and the Northern America. The highest level in Hungary, Poland. I'd like to stress that uh, in the UK, the mortality rate started to go down considerably earlier than in our country. We haven't seen the high mortality rate uh, or, or of uh, lung cancer in female. The main reason for the lung cancer is smoking, no doubts. 90% it's proved and showed and shown several times. I'd like to speak about other forms of the malignant tumors, uh, that uh, the reason of them, smoking. It's uh, the larynx cancer, the similar levels, the similar curve, the beginning of downfall tendency at the same time as in the lung cancer group. The oral cavity uh, cancer, we have the decrease started a bit earlier, but this fluctuation still exists. Once again, I'd like to explain this difference that in etiology of uh, the oral uh, cavity cancer and uh, larynx cancer, uh, the great role plays uh, alcohol consumption and uh, HPV infection, especially uh, when we are talking about uh, the pharynx cancer and esophagus cancer. The similar picture we can see in the male groups, downfall tendency, since uh, the similar, similar point as the lung cancer. Uh, then the stomach cancer. We had different considerable from their Western European countries. So the same countries are presented here, nearly similar tendencies. The USA, very low mortality. But we go shoulder to shoulder with Japan. It's known that in Japan and Russia uh, has always had the high mortality rate uh, of uh, stomach cancer. I'd like to emphasize uh, that we as doctors have nothing to do with this success. Even we don't know the reason for this downward tendency in mortality rate. Of course, we can suggest, having known the theological factors of the stomach cancer, we may suggest that it happened because the uh, infection rate of Helicobacter pylori went down, uh, their uh, food consumption improved, 
uh, the food composition has been improved uh, with the majority of the vegetables and fruits in the diet and of course the methods of the storing of food have changed uh, the industrial freezes emerged where this food can be stored safely this red curve russia and green japan the similar trend I don't know whether you know, whether you remember that in Japan for many years, for decades, uh, there has been this stomach uh, cancer screening endoscopically. We have been told that this endoscopic screening for stomach cancer is effective, but this graph shows that it's not true. If the Russian audience, the Russian audience knows that we haven't conducted uh, this screening, but the tendency is the same, like in Japan. Oh, we are a bit higher, but we run parallelly. This tendency says, as I suggested, and it's, uh, it's uh, thought by the Western epidemiologists that stomach cancer screening is not effective. Now let us consider the dynamics for other malignant tumors. There was the increase and decrease in mortality of colorectal cancer. In the West, uh, you can observe pretty much similar trends, although Hungary again falls out here. That can be explained by endoscopic screening for colorectal cancer intestine cancer originally had all kind of blood screenings and now they start to use colonoscopy for that and that's the very clear outcome of early diagnostics and even pre prevention and screening for the pre-cancer when they search for the early traces, they uh, surgically remove them, and since morbidity and mortality goes down. Here you can see breast and cervix uterine cancer. Again, here we can observe the uh, upward and then downward trend. If you visited the screening session yesterday that's our shame and that's our negative trend that we can observe in russia the prostate cancer we used to have opportunistic cancer before that but we had reduced mortality just because we had the uh, better prevention and reduce the risk factors. Now we are observing the upward trend, but if I would show you the age breakdown, young people would suffer most. So the prostate cancer is uh, growing, although all other countries are seeing the downward trend. So Russia stands out here. That was the uh, epidemi epidemiology background. Now let us move on with prevention. I'd like to start with tobacco, because tobacco is still the biggest risk factor and the main cause of lung cancer. This slide shows the trans and smoking prevalence. You know that Sir Richard Dole found, published uh, in 1951 his first paper on uh, smoking and lung cancer, and we had a lot of publications since that, so we have gathered a great bulk of statistics there. In Great Britain was the first to uh, adopt measures against the smoking, and you can see the uh, distinct decrease 
from 83 to 25%. That means that smoking control can be an effective tool in cancer, in lung cancer prevention. Poland is another success story for that. Everybody knows this picture. I don't know whether you've seen that or not, but it's really a nice chart that shows that in the United Kingdom total cancer mortality goes down both for lung cancer, for larynx, pharynx and all other 15 forms of cancers that can result from smoking. Those who are not attributed to smoking shows no distinct trend. So if we call, if we take all decreases in cancer mortality, they relate to the smoking caused cancers. In Russia, we started quite Late, we got the first data on smoking-related cancers in 1985. So that was not uh, only the cardiovascular diseases like Hobler, but some others that result from smoking. And back at that time, we had a major conference under the auspices of the International Cancer Studies uh, organization and for the first time we've uh, come up with the recommendations on uh, smoking restrictions uh, there was uh, no conventions or agreements on smoking like the framework world health organization um, convention on uh, smoking restrictions, but there were some local recommendations that we adopted for the Soviet Union and Eastern European countries. Besides, we've, we adopted the recommendation on TAR limits because back at that time the TAR levels were over 30 milligrams per cigarette for Soviet cigarettes and cigarettes that were imported from Bulgaria, because at that time we imported them from Bulgaria. So as per recommendation, along with other prevention measures, the tar level in cigarettes should be controlled and reduced to 15 milligrams per cigarette. At that time, that was quite a revolutionary idea because at that time the tar level and as the result the uh, cancer-related substances was extremely high, two times higher. Believe me or not, the Russian ministry, the Soviet Ministry of Health adopted the recommendation and uh, started to regulate the tar content and uh, the first uh, limit was set at 18 milligrams per cigarette. And this uh, downward trend was uh, the direct consequence of that measure. Yesterday, we were told about the spread of smoking habits in Russia. The only thing we could observe in the 90s was the uh, widespread of uh, tobacco and consumption and uh, smoking. Here I rely on the official data according to which the uh, smoking went down in the previous two years, but that's, that took place only in the last two years, and this trend is the uh, effect of the regulation that we introduced back in the uh, 90s. That what we call hazard or risk reduction. When we discussed those recommendations, the uh, leaders of uh, 
World Health Organizations and other health authorities didn't help us much, but we were supported by Sir Richard Rose, a very respected personality, and he helped us through. As a result, we've managed to save 200,000 lives of Russians who would have died of lung cancer instead. So that was the direct outcome of TAR tar limitation. So here you can read that after the tar and nicotine concentration regulation resulted in a steep decrease in the tar content and uh, consequently a lung cancer incidence and mortality in Russia. That's the statistics of uh, number of deaths from lung cancer. Here we can see the uh, expected uh, minus observed uh, numbers that is uh, saved lives in the right column that what we expected uh, in uh, 1993 for males and females. So in total over 200,000 lives. The next uh, item in prevention section is alcohol. Again, pictures look pretty much the same. The trend picked out somewhere in the 90s. And at that time, we decided to understand the reasons of this high mortality and the sharp fluctuations. At that time, we started the biggest in Russia, maybe the, one of the biggest in the world, epidemiological studies in Russia that comprised the 15 retrospective mortality studies that comprise 50,000 deaths cohort studies of 210,000 healthy males and we males, and we also had over 25,000 uh, of autopsies, that is forensic autopsy analysis. The um, result showed that the uh, hazardous alcohol consumption and here I put it in English language that is the dangerous or hazardous alcohol consumption that is over three to put it in simple terms over three bottles of vodka per week results in a significant risk increase for all eight medical and all non-medical diseases and threats, including the upper ear digestive tract cancer, liver cancer, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and so on. That's the results of um, alcohol-related causes, retrospective studies for high and low alcohol consumption, Mortality is here 8.5 per 1,000. For those who drink over three bottles, the mortality is three times higher. This, cur this line is straight, not curvy. And the mortality here also results from the reasons that were listed at the previous slide. These are cancers and other diseases that are related with hazardous vodka consumption. That's the picture for young males and for elderly males aged 35 to 54 and from 54 to 74 respectively. 
you can see that uh, for the latter, the correlation is lower, but it's still quite evident. We calculated that 59% for young men and 22% for elderly men, the hazardous alcohol consumption can be attributed to the mortality. For women, the percentage is lower, but still the figures here are quite threatening. So the conclusions were that hazardous alcohol consumption is a major premature mortality reason in Russia. That's the uh, slide that shows the um, smoking-related mortality. If we compare smokers to non-smokers, we can see a definite increase of lung cancer incidence, some cardiovascular diseases, all kinds of lung diseases. So overall risks are a bit lower just because Russia stands out in the world in this respect because alcohol I impact on mortality is higher than elsewhere. And you can see the the uh, risk for smokers compared to never smokers is 53% higher. We took this figure as the ba baseline and considered the global tobacco survey that showed that 62% of Russian men are smokers. So we concluded that 20% of male death result from the uh, smoking habits. According to Richard Pitt, one third of uh, smoking related. Uh, so according to Richard Pitt, this figure was one third of all death. So we result that. Uh, Overall, that two thirds of all Russian male deaths are caused by tobacco and alcohol consumption. So that's how we got the knowledge based upon a serious epidemiological studies. We got the understanding of high male and female mortality in Russia, and we adopted certain measures that were state government measures that we took back in 2005 upon WHO recommendations to control alcohol consumptions. These include increase of excises and taxes, uh, bans on um, advertisement of alcoholic beverages and commercials, restriction of retail sales, and so on. These were the WHO recommendations that we adopted here, and all types of uh, strong spirits consumptions went down, as well as illegal alcohol commerce and trade. So you can see the downward trend for wine, beer, and so on. Well, for wine, we have never had stronger trend for beer is growing, but it's anyway better than drink illegal vodka. I get back to the same slide. Since that time, we have noticed the decrease in the mortality rate of for of all the reasons once again our calculations as to the lung cancer since 2005 after the introduction of the alcohol consumption control we saved life to two million men and one and something a million of women that is quite considerable here I say about the fact that since 2005 we saved the life of 3 million lives. If this uh, process of tendency remains uh, with caution, I am saying that we can reach 
are the goals set by the UN. 25% of relative reduction of premature in premature mortality rates from uh, chronic non-infectious diseases. And I use may uh, because I'm very cautious in my forecast because we have to take into account we know all the reasons. We know that mainly all these reasons are connected to with the, related to the behavior patterns, the changing in behavior uh, into the uh, area of prophylactics. <coughs> if we apply all our knowledge properly, we can reach our goal and decrease uh, our mortality rate. And of course, vaccination against HPV and uh, virus, viral hepatitis B and C. These measures are unique ones. It's a separate slide about air pollution. I'm not going to dwell upon this. I'd like to say about the fact that I've been talking about the things that are being implemented into life all over the world. But there are some knowledge that is not implemented about aspirin. We have considerable proof that aspirin can be protective against the development of cancer. These are Australian data that uh, was presented at the end of the 1998. The same is true for colorectal and stomach cancer. Eight randomized studies proved our data. I think that we it's high time that we think about the application of these serious data as to the cancer prophylactics. Could you help me? Another slide. It's proved uh, that aromatase inhibitors can be used as a, for the prophylactic of the breast cancer in a high-risk group of women. Despite uh, the, all the good news, uh, all this information, uh, here is the bad news. The mortality, uh, the ratio of mortality and morbidity that is that characterizes the effectiveness of the anti-cancer campaign, this data quite poor, the lung cancer, 90%. Of diagnosed lung cancer uh, die at the same year of diagnosis. Then, unpleasant slide: seventy percent of the lung cancer is diagnosed at the advanced stages. We compared this data uh, with the 2001. The situation has deteriorated. What can we do with this? Only screening. It's a primary prophylactics. I listed all the forms of screening that are accepted and are conducted. Uh, I put a question mark, uh, screening uh, with the CT. Today, Anton Barchuk uh, will prove uh, the otherwise, and I'm ready to believe this. As we know that screening with the low dose CT is used in a high risk groups among those among uh, among uh, smokers heavy smokers uh, the study group is being narrowed we can continue to narrow the groups the genetic studies showed that first of all 22 lo loci, loci uh, has been have been identified that are related uh, to the high risk of the lung cancer. But there are no penetrative genes related to the lung cancer risk. But we know that there are 
there is a great polymorphism, 22 loci that can increase uh, the Lincoln's uh, incidence. These are our co-data with our colleagues. Uh, we showed that there is some variants of the gene BRSA related to the high risk of the breast cancer and the ovarian cancer. This typical, this variant, no, not to that, uh, can increase 2.5 fold lung cancer incidence, especially squamous cancer, squamous cell uh, carcinoma. These data and other accumulated data will help us to narrow the group for this or that screening for the lung cancer. Quite trivial slide. But I think uh, our presentation should be ended by this slide, that the evidence-based prevention is the most powerful tool for malignant tumors control. Yes. Thank you. I'm finished. Did we ask for questions or we continue? Да, пожалуйста. Questions, please. It's called I sing and I dance on my own. I'd like to ask. how the disintegration of the USSR influences uh, the uh, registration of the mortality rate. Any disintegration, any collapse does influence negatively. We know that this integration of the USSR did influence our lifestyle, our economics. The point is, it's a very specific question, disintegration or not disintegration. We should put this in a, in a different way. It's a political crisis. If any political crisis did influence negatively the registration of the diseases, and not only this, and it did influence uh, the health of people. Uh, at that time, uh, their consumption of alcohol increased. We know that we Russians we can drink uh, for both re on both re for both reasons or because of the grief because of the happiness at that time the uh, it was the poverty the, the answer is the political crisis did influence everything and it's obvious.